Is it true that only Muslims will enter paradise? What about the people who believe in God and do not follow a strict religion? Uh, it's actually quite a big question, you know. So we have difference of opinion even in there also. Uh, so obviously um, within Hanafi we have two different opinions. Within Shafi they have three different, different opinions, okay? Well, uh, in terms of um, the Salafis, uh, sometimes some of them go with Ash'aris, uh, the vast majority they go with. So uh, as you can see, it's like uh, big differences. But one thing is very obvious. Uh, God does not oppress anyone. And God clarified that saying, even just one small drop. Okay. So there is no any oppression from God. Okay. But... Um, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, so for example, from our point of view, we say... Yeah, it is a big question. And is it true that only Muslims will enter paradise? What about the people who believe in God? No, no, in terms of, uh, it is ijma of all of the sects of Islam, excluding the early, some of the groups, saying that uh, uh, anyone who followed the prophet, any prophet, while his religion was not abrogated, so all of them will enter paradise, okay? So only the disagreement is about um, this uh, issue of obligation. Did obligation happen or not? So there we have some of the, you can say, uh, um, uh, disagreements among the scholars. Okay, so that is one thing. And the second thing, from our point of view, we say if a person, after the maturity age, if he will have enough time, time period, which would be sufficient for him to find the truth. So after that, he will be chargeable for his beliefs. Okay, so this is our position. Okay, but Asharis, so they disagree with us. They say, um, even if some person will have, uh, he will live 100 years, but without getting a message, like a correct message, so then he will enter paradise because he is excused by that. But because we give importance to the brain. So we say after the um, like a level of the brain reaching to the peak, when person is able to filter the truth from the, you can say to separate the truth from the false, after that, if he will have enough time period, but even after that, he will insist on the error. So then he will be punishable. Okay, so that is our position. But then we again, after that, our Imam, Sheikh Abu Mansur, says people are different one to another. Okay, so, um, for example, the time period which, will, which is given to Einstein is totally different to someone who is very blunt, not very, you can say, intelligent. So God will give the second person much more longer time before he will start questioning him. Understand? Okay, so what is that time limit? We say we will find it out in your Qiyamah. Because we are not responsible to send the people to paradise and to the hell, isn't it? Mm. Okay, but one thing, we say that there is no oppression from God at all. Okay, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. God does not charge anyone to do anything above his ability. So this person, for example, who lives all the time in one of the very poor and very, you can say, uh, epidemic uh, country. Okay, so God will not use the same scale to weigh his deeds, which he did use with the person who was just next to the authentic information. Understand? Okay, but then what about these scholars said five years, another scholar said two years, another said ten years. I say it is just estimation and just opinions. God does not use our opinions. God does not um, follow the opinion of Abu Hanifa or um, uh, Imam Bukhari or Ibn Taymiyyah or Albani or Ibn Uthaymin. God does not follow any, any of his slaves' opinions. But he has the most uh, greatest, uh, you can say, um, scale which never oppresses anyone so he will use his own scales okay so that is the most important thing but 
then uh, the opinions will just ignore it. Sometimes um, we oppress people who don't believe in exactly the same thing um, all the that time, we not do. Not sometimes, not, all the time, yes. Not Sometimes not even consciously, just by the way we sort of even think of them, the, the way we perceive them in our minds, the way we speak to them, the advice that we give them, it's yeah. sort of patronising. Um, if we are, we should think, if, if God isn't oppressive, then we don't have the right to be. Never, never. God did not give anyone that right. Allah says, وَمَا أُرْسِلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ حَافِظِينَ God saying, God did not send them to be judges, okay, about uh, anyone. Okay, so everyone is responsible for his own sins and mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we don't know how people think in their minds. We don't know their their, their values. We just see the surface, and sometimes yeah. we sort of take it to the yeah. next level. No, no, but, but level. this, you know, this, unfortunately, this desire of uh, being God is with uh, nearly everyone, especially Muslim scholars. So they desire to be gods, so they have to judge. Okay, so look, I mean... Um, that's totally incorrect misconception. Mm. Okay. So God will decide who will go to paradise and he will decide who will go uh, to the hell. God says, أَهُمْ يَقْسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكَ نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا God says, are they, are they weighing and separating and deciding to whom to give the mercy of God? So God says, we are the ones who decided about their life so do you think that will give them the right to decide uh, how to judge the people in your al you know? Hmm. So anyway, God is the uh, judge. And uh, the justice of God is just uh, amazing, unbeatable justice. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and you know, we do live in a planet with 7 billion people, so we do have to find a way to um, accept that we're not all going to agree on everything. Exactly, so that's, yeah. that's a given. Yeah, yeah. But, then, but God knows everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and God knows our excuses and God knows everything. Mm. Okay, so uh, it's just amazing that God is judge and not this scholar and not that uh, uh, wali and not this peer. Mm. I'm yeah. really happy that God is judge. Yeah.